I don't run a Mac, and I'm sure that most of the people watching this channel don't run Macs either, but that doesn't mean that I don't care about the Apple hardware, because forgetting all of the Apple politics, from a purely technical aspect, the M1 Mac is a really, really impressive device. And there is one project in particular I've been keeping my eye on, and that is trying to get Linux running natively on the M1 Max. Now, it's been running for quite a while, and I did a video a couple of months ago talking about exactly that. But there's a difference between running and actually running at a usable state. Now, you might be thinking, you're never going to use this, so why do you even care to make a video on this in the first place? Well, it's the same reason why if I found out I could get a root shell in my car, I would probably do a video on that as well, because even though I have no interest in actually using it myself, I still think it's really, really cool. And it's sort of in the spirit of Linux to hack on it until it just works. While there are some other projects working on stuff here and there, the main project working on this support is known as Asahi Linux, and their initial goal is to support the M1 Mac Mini. I imagine the reason why they're going for that first rather than for the M1 Mac laptops is because laptops are their like own whole different beast, and at least with the M1 Mac Mini, there's going to be some off-the-shelf hardware inside of that. Now, when I initially covered this, the most impressive thing that was happening was Corellium's project where they managed to port Ubuntu over to the M1 Max. Now, that might sound, you know, absolutely insane. And wow, you can already run Ubuntu on an M1 Mac. It wasn't exactly that simple. There weren't really drivers for many things. And while you did have a graphical environment, you know, display controllers were still fairly rudimentary. And as of August, they still were fairly rudimentary, but it had extended past just Ubuntu. To the best of my knowledge, Asahi has been working with Base Debian and also Base Arch Linux, and right here is a graphical environment running under Debian. Now, don't freak out because this isn't perfect. Uh, it doesn't actually have drivers for the graphics card, so everything in here is actually running on the CPU in software but it is running even though it just had a rudimentary display controller. Being a rudimentary controller, it couldn't actually use the screen to the full extent. So the screen that it has attached is supposed to be a 4K screen. In this screenshot, as you can see inside of NeoFetch, it was only running at 1080p. I guess I can't zoom in because Twitter's awful. Uh, but it 1080p is still very, very good. But since then, a lot of stuff has changed. And now, it's actually got the screen running at 4K 60fps. Still in software though, so it is going to chug a bit with more intensive tasks, especially because it's still not actually making use of the M1 architecture properly. So the M1 CPU is a big little CPU. And it doesn't actually know how to make use of the big and the little cores. And from what I've seen, it's actually running the big cores slower than the little cores. But besides that, there are some really neat takeaways here. So in that first screenshot, you might have noticed that it's actually running GNOME. Now in the second screenshot, it's running Sway. What that indicates to me is this is actually running Wayland GNOME, which I think is actually kind of interesting. I don't know why they went with Wayland over Xorg. There might be some compatibility reason, or maybe Xorg was going to be too heavy, and trying to port that over to running on the M1 Max would be way, way too much of a challenge. I don't know the reason why they did this, but it is kind of cool to see Wayland being used like this. Another fun takeaway here is that a web browser is running on this. Now, web browsers running on ARM-based systems is Nothing that impressive, like, there are web browsers that run on ARM. What is impressive, though, is that it's actually connected to the internet. Now, there isn't actually Wi-Fi drivers at this point, so, you know, connecting to the internet like that is basically a no-go. But, okay, there are Ethernet drivers, and even better, there are USB drivers, so USB Ethernet is actually going to work. And by having USB support, that gives you a lot of really, really cool stuff that you can do. There's the obvious thing of USB thumb drives, but those are boring and everyone knows what a USB thumb drive is. 
but right now there isn't actually sound drivers so using the built-in sound system is not going to work but usb sound cards are a thing that does exist so just plug one in you can buy them for ten dollars and you can just get it to work so follow along with me then. What if we take the USB sound card, we combine this with a USB webcam, and then we also get a microphone that we could plug in through the sound card, or it could be a USB microphone and using it like that. Well, this gives us everything we need to do a video conference about the M1 Mac running Linux on the M1 Mac running Linux, even though it's not exactly in a amazingly usable state. And that seems to be what Alyssa is planning to do at XDC 2021. Now you might be wondering what this talk is actually going to be about. So as the recording of this and probably as of the upload as well, the talk hasn't actually happened. But there is one part of the M1 Mac that is still basically considered magic and no one really has any idea how it actually works. Or at least that's what we thought. So the talk is going to be about the Apple GPU. Now that would have been a great segue if the Xorg website actually loaded. Okay, there we go. The internet has been under a spell over the M1 system on chip. Is Apple's GPU architecture magically faster than the rest of the industry? Or is it all smoke and mirrors? Only a reverse engineering witch can divine that truth. Grab your cape because we're about to spoil the chip's secrets. Solve mysteries we were never supposed to know about and gain a Mesa driver along the way. We may not be very far off actually having a graphics driver for the M1 Mac which I think is kind of insane. Cracking that is one of the big hurdles that Asahi Linux needs to do. Sure, it's all well and good to have everything running on software for the sake of just getting it actually running, but having it actually be usable on a day-to-day -day basis requires actually fully making use of the hardware. Now, Asahi Linux is kind of a weird project because it is a distro technically, but also isn't trying to be a distro. So there is going to be a packaged version of us here Linux. So if some random person wants to go and download it and have all of the patches they need to actually get Linux running on the M1 Mac, this is one very easy way to go and do so. But they don't just want us here to be a distro that runs on the M1 Mac. Instead, what they want to do is make the patches they need and then get these patches sent back upstream and then back down to distro so any distro out there could theoretically run on the M1 Mac. So if you wanted to go install something like Pop OS, you could just go and install that and just have it work. That's still a very, very long way away. So until that point, they'll be posting the patches and actually explaining how to install them for your kernel. Now, I do want to address the naysayers in the comments because every single time I talk about the M1 Mac, there's going to be at least one person that says there's no point in doing this because it's never going to be good because Apple is never going to actively support it. And while that is true that Apple is never going to actually support it and it is going to take quite a while to be good, Apple is also not really doing anything to stop it. In fact, they've actually done something to make it considerably easier. So... There was this rumor going around that the M1 Mac bootloader was completely locked down and it would be impossible to load any custom kernels. While that may have been true at one point, it's definitely not true now. So there was a patch added to Big Sur that modified the documentation for KMUtil, explicitly adding the ability to load in a custom kernel. Now in this update, it didn't actually add in the functionality. That came a little bit later. Why they updated the documentation first, I don't really know, but that functionality is explicitly there. If this was just a bug or just an oversight, there would not be documentation to actually do this. Well, what about the drivers then? Aren't they going to be insanely difficult to make or frankly impossible? 
And sure, they're going to be difficult, absolutely no doubt. But the people working on Asahi Linux went into this understanding they would have to reverse engineer the drivers, and they knew this was not going to be an easy feat. I don't think anyone working on this project expects this to be easy or expects Apple to help them out in any way. This is going to be difficult, especially when they are writing the drivers from the ground up and not reusing existing macOS code. But how about we shift it around a bit? Should LibreBoot and CoreBoot just give up because they're never going to be given official support? Or what about all of the developers who've made drivers for hardware where the hardware manufacturers don't even care that Linux exists? I don't think they should give up either, and even though something like Asahi Linux is going to be an insanely massive project, I don't think that's any reason to just give up the project. So I'll leave a link in the description down below to the Asahi Linux project if you want to go and check out what they're doing, or maybe you're a developer and you want to go and, you know, actually help out in the project, I think that would be really, really cool. Also, there is a lot of information that I didn't talk about today, like, you know, is this project illegal? Things like that, that might actually be worth looking into. So I don't have any interest personally of running Linux on the M1 Mac. I don't own an M1 Mac. I don't really have any interest in actually buying the hardware, mainly because it's very, very expensive and fixing it is also very, very difficult. So it's not what I'm going to buy, but that doesn't stop the project from being really, really awesome and seeing how much work is actually being done being awesome as well. I will be following this project very closely and I will be making future videos about any of the big breakthroughs that actually do happen. Also, if you use Twitter and you want to keep up to date on the project, I'd recommend going and following Hector Martin, Sven Peter, and also Alyssa Rosenweig. I probably pronounced that name wrong, but there's probably other people working on the project, but they seem to be talking about it basically all of the time. I think that's going to be it for me then, and if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribe site in LiberaPay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.